welcome all of you on behalf of all of my colleagues at UCSF. Uh, we love science, so uh, this is really fun for us and a huge treat. It's a wonderful day, and many of you have gathered here today to help us celebrate something that's just a, a wonderful new thing, the Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences. I want to recognize um, many of my colleagues in the audience, but I also want to recognize our neighbors from UC Berkeley and Stanford. Welcome to all of you, um, not only who are here in this room in Genentech Hall, but also in our satellite viewing rooms on campus, which are, I'm told, on, at capacity. And uh, those of you who are watching the streaming online, and a shout out to Ron Winslow from the Wall Street Journal, who I hear is watching remotely from New York. Hello to Ron. Today's event is meant to be a celebration, and it's a celebration of the 2014 recipients of the Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences, the second annual award recognizing excellence in research, aiming at curing intractable diseases and extending human life. But it's also an opportunity to bring together leading researchers, including several of our UCSF Nobel laureates, as well as all but one of the 2013 Breakthrough Prize winners for a symposium on the state of research in cancer, genetics, neurobiology, and stem cells. Before we turn to today's symposium itself, I want to take a moment to recognize the six 2014 Breakthrough winners who were announced last evening at an event hosted by the Breakthrough Foundation. I'm gonna ask them to stand and then we can all give them a round of applause. So the 2014 Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences winners are James P. Allison, Maylong R. DeLong, Michael N. Hall, Robert Langer, Richard Lifton, and Alexander Varshavsky. Please join me in congratulating all of these winners. So for those of you who don't know about the Breakthrough Prize, the prize was inaugurated in February with the announcement of the 2013 recipients at a ceremony here at UCSF Mission Bay. The prize was established by a group of visionary scientists and entrepreneurs. Art Levinson, the former CEO of Genentech and now the CEO of Calico and a wonderful colleague of mine during my Genentech days. Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, Ann Wojcicki, the founder of 23andMe, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, Dr. Priscilla Chan, Jack Ma, an internet entrepreneur, Kathy Zhang, and entrepreneur Yuri Milner, who first conceived of the prize. The prize means to give special attention to recent developments and provides each of its six recipients with $3 million, placing it among the world's, world's largest scientific awards. Now this afternoon at four o'clock, I'll be moderating a panel discussion with the 2014 recipients in Fisher Banquet Hall in the Rudder Center. For those of you who don't know UCSF, that's the large red building adjacent to this building on the quad. But before that, we're going to be treated to a day of talks on some of the most important areas of medical research by luminaries in their fields. I wanna particularly recognize cancer biologist Frank McCormick, director of the UCSF Helen Diller Family Can Compre Comprehensive Cancer Center, as well as the UCSF Nobel laureates in the audience. Elizabeth Blackburn, a 2009 recipient, Stanley Prusner, the 1997 recipient, and Shinya Yamanaka of the UCSF affiliated Gladstone Institutes, a 2012 recipient and a 2013 recipient of the Breakthrough Prize. Their contributions to telomerase, prion, and stem cell research have galvanized the patient-focused areas of medical research. And I also want to take the opportunity to welcome back to UCSF 2013 recipients of the Breakthrough Prize who were part of our community earlier in their careers. Charles Sawyers of Memorial Sloan Kettering, with whom I trained as a resident here at UCSF. Napo Ferrara, who did his postdoc fellowship at UCSF before going to Genentech and Corey Bargman, who was on our faculty before being recruited to Rockefeller University. UCSF is proud of all of our alums, but we're particularly proud to welcome all of you back to our campus. 
So finally, I want to welcome all the other outstanding scientists who have literally crossed the country or ocean to participate in this symposium today. UCSF is honored by your presence, and you are truly leaders in your fields, uh, and each of you, as a recipient of the Breakthrough Prize, deserves our recognition. And these winners include Bert Vogelstein of Johns Hopkins University, Robert Weinberg of the Whitehead Institute at MIT, Lou Cantley of the Weill Cornell Medical College, David Botstein of Princeton University, Eric Lander of the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, and Hans Clevers of the Humbricht Institute. We're all honored by your presence here today. It's for the students here today, I want to point out, look around you. This is a really unusual day to gather all of these top scientists here at UCSF, and uh, we're in for a thrill, a day of science. So now, uh, without further ado, I stand between you and the science, the main course today. So I I'm really happy to, to turn to Art Levinson. Um, and Art's going to be really disappointed if I don't do a 15-minute introduction, I know, as he's giving me the, uh, all right, enough already. Um, but, but Art uh, did his postdoc fellowship in the lab of UCSF Nobel laureate Mike Bishop. Uh, and uh, he will be our chair for today's first session on cancer genetics. Welcome, Art. Well, a, a great thanks, uh, Chancellor Sue Hellman and UCSF for hosting this wonderful and, and extremely special event. And my congratulations to all the winners of the 2013 uh, Breakthrough for Prize in, in Life Sciences. Um, as Sue mentioned, I had the great fortune to work uh, at UCSF in the, in the laboratories of Mike Bishop and Harold Varmus, um, who of course won the Nobel Prize for their pioneering efforts establishing that mammalian genomes uh, contained uh, genetic sequences very closely related to the potent oncogenes that are harbored by certain avian retroviruses. Uh, uh, a, a groundbreaking discovery, and the work of our next two speakers followed closely on the heels uh, of, of that particular discovery, and uh, both individuals uh, have gone on to make um, uh, discoveries that extended uh, these findings in, in very dramatic and, and unexpected ways, so it's going to be a treat to hear from both. I would like to introduce the first speaker, Bert Vogelstein, now. Bert uh, is the Clayton Professor of Oncology and Pathology and co-director of the Ludwig Institute at the Simmel, Sidney Kimmel uh, Comprehensive Cancer Center at Johns Hopkins, um, and is an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Uh, Bert was the first scientist to determine the molecular basis of a common human cancer. Uh, he and his colleagues demonstrated that colorectal tumors result from the gradual accumulation of genetic alterations in specific oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. In 1989, Dr. Vogelstein discovered that P53 not only played a role in human tumor genesis, but that it was a common denominator of human tumors mutated in a majority of them. More recently, his group has established that the P53 gene is more frequently mutated in cancers than any other gene. In 1991, Vogelstein and his colleagues Kinsler and Nakamura discovered another tumor suppressor gene called APC that was responsible for familial uh, adenomatous polyposis, a syndrome associated with the development of numerous small benign tumors, uh, some of which progress to ca cancer. Vogelstein and Kinsler subsequently showed that somatic mutations of APC initiate most cases uh, of colon and rectal cancers. Dr. Vogelstein and his colleagues were also the first to map cancer genomes and to use genome-wide sequencing to identify the basis of a hereditary form of cancer. His team has determined the genetic landscape of more than a dozen uh, types of tumors, and together with the earlier studies, this work has provided the conceptual basis for what now is uh, commonly called personalized uh, or precision medicine. Dr. Vogelstein has won numerous awards for his pioneering studies on the pathogenesis of human cancer. These include the Young Investigator Award from the American Federation for Clinical Research, the Bristol Myers Squibb Award for, for Distinguished Achievement in Cancer Research, and the American Cancer Society Medal of Honor. Uh, he is a member of both the American Academy of Sciences uh, and as well as the National Academy of Sciences. And of course, he was one of the 11 recipients of the inaugural class of the Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences. Uh, Bird has published more than 450 scientific papers since 1976. And according to the Institute for Scientific Information and his Wikipedia entry, his papers have been cited more than 200,000 times and remarkably more than those of any other scientist uh, publishing during that entire time period. So uh, what, a, what a treat to be able to hear Bert. And I'd like to 
uh, welcome to the podium at this time.